I'm back and uh, I just want to really quickly do the story here about the article in the HuffPost blog written by Ron Campia. I'm not sure if I got that last name right, but whatever. It's a great read. The biggest legislative marijuana policy reforms of 2016. Now I'm just summarizing this here, kind of. There's some stuff that you really can't summarize, but so it's going to take me a second, but it's let me just summarize the whole thing and say 2016 has been a revolutionary year in marijuana uh, law reform, marijuana legalization efforts. Um, and just to, as an activist myself, I'll tell you that the uh, sentiment on the ground was excitement. People were ready for this. They were, you know, my legalize, which is a ballot initiative in Michigan to get it on the ballot in 2016. Whether it failed or not, we don't know yet. We're still in court trying to get it uh, but anyway everything I did in that vein indicated to me that there's a lot of enthusiasm about 2016 in Michigan and all over the country so let's go ahead and give you all the fun things that happened this year starting with just a couple weeks ago Illinois governor Bruce Rayner who is a Republican signed a bill removing the threat of arrest for small amounts of marijuana uh, good step in the right direction in Illinois uh, Chicago is in Illinois. Pennsylvania and Ohio enacted effective medical marijuana laws via their legislature, making them the 24th and 25th states to do so. Now, is this good news or bad news? When the legislator legalizes marijuana for you, or medical marijuana, usually it's not very good. There's a, something to it that's not right. And in this case, it's highly restrictive. I'm going to go over these things in detail probably on some other clips coming up over the next few weeks because uh, we have to summarize these real fast today but I want, all these stories are really important and they should have focus on them so as bad as their laws may be as a result more than half of the US population now lives in states that have opted to legalize medical marijuana so now you have the 24th and 25th state to legalize medical marijuana when do you say, okay, it is medicine, get it off of this Controlled Substance Act, or at least put it on a different uh, designation that doesn't say that it has no medical value, because we know it has medicinal value. It's... Moving on. This year has seen improvements to several existing medical marijuana programs, Michigan not being one of them, unfortunately. Colorado adopted Jack's Law, which provides protections for medical marijuana patients who attend public schools. Connecticut, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont expanded the list of medical conditions for which patients can qualify to use medical marijuana. Should be there anything. Anything that you think you need medical marijuana for, it probably helps. Anyway, Vermont also enacted a law to, that reduces the required time for patient-provider relationship from six to three months. And allows, uh, and allows marijuana to be transferred to research institutions and requires labeling and child resistant packaging for edibles sold at dispensaries. More regulations, but you know, that's what we asked for. No one's complaining. As long as we get, don't get arrested, you know, you can't say, oh, you didn't, you didn't label this. It's not in a child proof container. Off to prison you go, you can never get your marijuana license back again. You know, that's kind of what some of these states are doing. They're making laws just to snarl people in, into stuff that they don't know nothing about. All right, Oregon increases access to medical marijuana for veterans who receive assistance from the VA program. In Illinois, Governor Rauner signed a bill to extend and expand the state's pilot medical marijuana program. Yeah, it did have like a two-year window on it or something like that, so that got extended. Hopefully, the expansion isn't just the idea that, you know, there's only so many dispensaries. I mean, they make these numbers that are all arbitrary, plant counts and just whatever, you know. I mean, that's that's where I see a lot of these places heading. And I think uh, Illinois will be one of those places where they're going to try to do all kinds of tracking and stuff. And we'll see. But anyway, Republican states always, when they have control over something, like in Michigan, they don't see, they, the government just seems to back off and 
and let law enforcement handle it on a small time level. Uh, in Illinois and other places where Republican uh, governors are hanging out, you get a mixed bag of rules and regulations that just seem like they're there to snarl people, and then you get these other things that are just corporate handouts, like saying that you got to track things. So all these tracking uh, companies that make scanners and tracking software, and sh you know, they're all getting their fingers in this business because of crony capitalism. We can see right through that. You know, we know that there's no real danger in growing a few too many plants or having too many ounces or whatever. So, anyway, I, I'm kind of just trailing off on Illinois. Let's get back to it. In Maryland, lawmakers enacted a law allowing nurse practitioners, dentists, podiatrists, and nurse midwives to recommend medical marijuana to qualifying patients. Now, that sounds like we're going in the right direction. All right, Florida, always trouble there with their laws. Florida enacted a law allowing terminal ill patients to use any form of medical marijuana. That's nice, but they don't have any high THC medical marijuana because there's a law for people that aren't terminal that you can only use some kind of low low THC medical marijuana. That's, that sentence don't even make sense. Unless you're talking about a high CBD and low THC, that's not completely medicine. As we all know, CBD alone is medicinal, but it's, it's it, it doesn't, there's a wide range of things that you can't treat with CBD, that you can treat with THC or a combination of both. So anyway, it also contains a major flaw that requires physicians to acquire medical marijuana for terminal patients, exposing them to potential criminal sanctions and or loss of their license. To practice medicine. Florida, they set traps all the time. Kansas lowered the maximum jail sentence for first time possession and reduced second offenses from felonies to misdemeanor. Louisiana and Maryland removed criminal penalties for possession of paraphernalia. And with the Maryland legislator overriding Governor Larry Hogan's veto, Oklahoma cut the penalties for second marijuana possession offense in half and Tennessee reduced a third possession offense from a felony to a misdemeanor, making the maximum penalty less than a year in jail. At the local level, New Orleans and a number of Florida counties pass ordinances that give police the option to issue summons and citations instead of arresting people for low-level possession. I believe Miami was one of those cities, uh, Baton Rouge maybe. I've seen a list, and basically big cities where it seems like there's a lot of other drugs going down anyway, so I think to try to like, you know, stop wasting the cops' time with marijuana. I'm, I don't really favor prohibition at all or trying to go after any drugs, but when you have methamphetamines and heroin and, you know, crack and all these other hard drugs, um, you know, it doesn't make sense to tie up police time with marijuana crimes. <clears throat> all right. Where are we at? Colorado. Lawmakers pass a bill to allow out-of-state ownership of marijuana businesses increase the amount of marijuana non-residents may purchase at retail establishments. That's about as liberal as it gets, fellas. <laughs> Colorado also increased local control of testing labs and created new businesses, business categories for businesses that transport marijuana. Slippery slope there. Uh, you don't want to mandate that you have to hire these businesses to transport your marijuana. I don't think Colorado would do such a thing. In Michigan, the legislator has talked about passing or amending our law to have such a provision, but I don't think it's going to... I hope it wouldn't get signed by, the, by everybody that has to sign that, because a lot of people in Michigan are just sick and tired of going harder on marijuana laws. They want to light, lighten them up. In Washington State, a number of bills were passed to streamline practices in the marijuana industry and make it easier to apply for reach, research licenses. Vermont came close to being the first state to legalize and regulate marijuana for adults 21 and older through legislature. A comprehensive bill passed in the Senate in the state, but stalled in the House. Vermont, trying your hardest to beat Oregon and Colorado. I mean, Vermont is probably one of the coolest marijuana states going, you know, and if if their legislative branch decided to legalize recreational marijuana, I 
I would have some confidence that it would be a pretty good law. We'll, we'll wait and see. Maybe I should look into that. I'm going to look into all these stories and get deeper in them eventually. But um, hopefully, yeah. Uh, Rhode Island is close behind Vermont, but both states expected to enact this legalization laws during their 2017 sessions. Do it. <laughs> Let's see what you got. November 8th, voters in as many as 10 states will be voting on marijuana ballot measures, specifically medical marijuana issues have already qualified for the ballot in Arkansas, Florida, Missouri, North Dakota. Oh wait, Arkansas and Florida, Missouri and North Dakota also may also be in play. As for regulating marijuana like alcohol, such ballot initiatives have qualified for the ballot in California, Maine, Massachusetts, and Nevada, with Arizona soon to follow. Finally, a tenth state, Montana, will be voting to improve its existing medical marijuana law, which I guarantee is a right-wing nightmare. I don't know much about it. Didn't even, no, I kind of I didn't remember hearing him uh, passing something. But anyway, that was your yearly wrap-up by the uh, Huff Post, uh, and they wanted to say that this year has been an important year, has been the most important year in the history of the movement to end marijuana prohibition in the United States. I have to agree. I mean, I don't usually always agree with people blogging about marijuana stories and summarizing stuff. The year ain't even over yet, and by by the end of the year, we're gonna have five more states with recreational marijuana probably legalized. I can't see any of those measures getting shot down. And next year is going to be cool, but just what they've done this year to lead us up into next year, it looks like a lot of, of good stories, a lot of good things going on from coast to coast. But what i got to tell you, in my opinion, is California is really the important place. That's where all the chips are going to fall. Because if California legalizes recreational marijuana, then by 2020, there's not going to be any kind of marijuana laws. Maybe in a couple of southern states or some of these red states, but I don't see it. I mean, there, like you got a place like Georgia or some of these other red states that have uh, started some kind of a medical marijuana program that was terrible, restrictive, and just really didn't like work for half the people or even a quarter of the people it could work for. They're looking at themselves in the mirror and they're saying, man, this is terrible what's going on. I mean, in uh, Minnesota, people are losing millions of dollars trying to run a medical marijuana business. That doesn't make any sense at all, especially since they are selling really good medicine. It's just it's too expensive. They can't sell flowers. Selling flowers subsidizes like most of your you know, other marijuana business. And if you can't do that, then it's pretty much like you don't have all the tools you need to be a successful business. It's like telling McDonald's they can't have buns anymore. You know, what the hell are they supposed to put their patties on? So that was uh, that's pretty much the summary. California is going to, I think they're going to legalize marijuana. And when they do, it's going to be like such a huge industry. There's already a massive industry behind medical marijuana in California, which has been thriving since the 90s, despite all the uh, federal uh, busts of dispensaries and, you know, busting people for growing massive grows and busting people that were just growing regular little medical marijuana grows. California's war on marijuana growing hasn't really slowed down a whole lot. And they have cartel people trying to grow outdoors up there and stuff, so it's a big mess. But when they legalize recreational marijuana, the industry is going to be hard to ignore, and states are going to be looking pretty dumb that ain't taking advantage of that tax revenue. All right, that's my summary. Bye.